Yeah, it's so beautiful here, isn't it? There were literally butterflies flying off everywhere around me. I know, it's quite And it's delicious. I don't mind, keep the barges and keep the show going. Hello, you beautiful giraffes. Oh my God, you guys look so tall and handsome. Look at them. Oh, they are absolutely gorgeous. I still can't get over the fact that this is my view every single morning. I wonder what they're looking at. They seem to be perplexed by something on the right-hand side over there. There's two more giraffes chilling over there as well. And I want to say maybe some deers, perhaps. I'm not sure I'm not the best with animals. Oh, look at that giraffe. Just look at how majestically they walk. Wow. Absolutely beautiful. Four of them all together, just chilling outside my room at the Animal Kingdom Lodge here in Walt Disney World, Florida. This is phenomenal. They seem to all be, at least these two do seem to be just confused by something. They're looking over the same direction. The one in the back is just chilling, drinking some water. Wow, this is just, <laughs> my actual dream has come true. This has been such a big dream of mine for so long. I can't believe this is my life at the moment. Good morning, so yes, my dreams have come true, my Disney dreams at least, by me staying at the Animal Kingdom Lodge here in Walt Disney World. Today is the 24th of March, 2023, and I am heading to Epcot. It is currently about 11 a.m. Oh my God, can you see the giraffe? I don't know, I'm just obsessed with them. I've always loved giraffes and I don't even know why, I can't tell you. I think like I said, it's it's something about them, just the fact they're so tall, their colors, just, they're quite, they're, they're quite calm as well, as, as, as far as animals go. Like they just kind of look, it's just chilling there. They look majestic. Let me know in the comments down below if you know what I mean by that. But go back and watch my vlog from when we went to Jico in 2017 and that was my first time stepping in to Animal Kingdom Lodge and from that moment on I was like oh my god are we going to see giraffes are we going to see giraffes sadly we didn't get to see them on that trip um, at the Animal Kingdom Lodge but they are now there like so many of them anyway today is Epcot today oh <laughs> I do apologize I you're probably already sick of me getting so excited about a bunch of giraffes but what can I say they just look they look beautiful anyway so I'm not gonna get distracted anymore today is Epcot day um, that's my park reservation it is currently about 10 past 11 in the morning so a bit of a later start to the day I'm trying to make the most of my resort as well it's very difficult because I wake up and I want to go to the parks and then I like open my blinds and the curtains and I see this and I'm like well how how do I leave this place honestly I could easily sit here they've got little chairs here on both sides on the balcony I could easily sit here and just watch the animals especially the giraffes all day all day I'm not even joking and just like literally just do that not even not even work not even read just nothing but look at them this is how much I love this situation that I'm in but we do have Epcot I don't plan on buying Genie Plus although things might change depending on how I feel the lines and wait times are when we do get to Epcot look at that again <laughs> But yeah, I am excited. We've got Guardians of the Galaxy. That's a new attraction to me. I haven't been able to be on it yet, obviously, because this is my first trip back to Walt Disney World since 2020. And there's plenty of other things to do. Of course, Flower and Garden Festival is also happening. So should be a good day. I'm planning to stay until the very end. Once I do get to Epcot, I'm probably going to head over in about an hour or so. So we're going to spend early afternoon until 10 p.m. at Epcot. So hopefully it should be a good day. But for now, my best day is happening right here in front of me with these beautiful stunning giraffes wow last night i got myself this coming back from magic kingdom i got it from the main street confectionery so this is gonna be my breakfast for the morning i'm looking forward to it i love the rice crispy treats here and they look cute as well also in case you're wondering the cookie that i had from last night as well because i got two things from the confectionery make sure you've watched my vlog from the magic kingdom my previous one as well but yeah, I got this one for today and I also got um, a cookie, like a peanut butter cookie. I did that one, also had some M&Ms on it and quite a lot of peanut butter stuff on it. It was very good. It was a lot, but it was tasty. Such a good dinner. <laughs> 
so yeah that was really good just in case you're wondering i'd happily even get it again except i don't think it's probably very good for me but we're in disney so it doesn't matter so i'm gonna eat this and just have a chill morning and hopefully we'll be at epcot by around 1 or 2 p.m that's kind of my aim for now well i'm finally on my way out of this beautiful hotel room at disney's animal kingdom lodge if you hear some random little rattling noises i've got my bag here with me very badly and i've got chewing gum in there i think that's what's making the yeah the noise it is currently about 25 minutes past 1 p.m so i think we'll probably get to epcot 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 we'll probably get to epcot at uh, hopefully 2.30 at the very latest. Let's quickly look out this window as well. There are so many windows at Animal Kingdom Lodge, just inside the lobby as well, on different floors. So you can see some animals over there as well. And what we need to go now is take this lift down to the lobby. I'm on the fourth floor, the lobby is on the third floor. So let me just press the button. There you go. Here we are heading into the lobby of Animal Kingdom Lodge. It's so, so beautiful. And oh my God, I think Chip or Daisy as well. Oh, there's Disney characters just chilling at the hotel. Oh my God, this is so cute. Look at that. Daisy and Dale are watching cartoons with some children here. It's so adorable. And then I'm pretty sure Chip must be somewhere around as well. Chip, how are you doing? You look so cute. So good to see you. Yeah, it's so beautiful here, isn't it? It's my first time staying here and it's so lovely. You're loving life, aren't you? Of course you're an animal yourself so <laughs> yeah the views right have you seen many animals yeah i saw giraffes earlier well you want to climb up the trees <laughs> oh chip you're so adorable i'm gonna take a couple of photos you look you also look so cool here it's like you belong i love it i love it <laughs> so good to see you chip how adorable was that just randomly bumping into chip over there and the cast member was so lovely she took a photo of me with chip it's just so cool seeing characters in the hotel resorts. Like it's amazing. And then Daisy and they are still watching cartoons with children. This is a phenomenal resort. Like already this has become my absolute favorite number one Disney World resort. And I've been lucky enough to stay at quite a few. I've stayed at the Beach Club. That was amazing. I've stayed at Port Orleans French Quarter. I really liked that as well. Riverside, I've stayed at All Star Movies. Where else have I stayed? Bye. <laughs> Oh, where else have I stayed? Okay, so uh, Port Orleans Riverside, Port Orleans French Quarter, All Star Movies, uh, Caribbean Beach as well. That's where I stayed with my friend Rukaya, and then Beach Club and Art of Animation as well. So I've done two values, two moderates, I think, or oh, three moderates, and then this is my second um, deluxe one. So Beach Club, Animal Kingdom Lodge, and this is by far my favorite. I love Beach Club as well. I think that might be my second favorite. Also Port Orleans French Quarter. If you're talking about moderate resorts. French Quarter is definitely my personal favorite. Animal Kingdom Lodge just has so much character. And by that, I don't mean characters as in Disney characters. I mean, it has character, it has personality. Every part of it just feels so cool. Like, look at all these details. It's amazing. <laughs> anyway, before we ran into Chippendale and Daisy, I wanted to mention about mousekeeping or housekeeping that happens here at Walt Disney World. So I think recently they brought it back apparently it was not happening for a while because of obviously the pandemic etc let me try and put this on there you go um so yeah when i checked in a couple of days ago the cast member asked me if i wanted it you know to happen to my i guess booking and i was like yeah sure and i thought it would be every day but it's not it's every other day which is more than okay for me i don't mind whatsoever um but today is the day that they should be coming so before i left i left some dollars in the room but i didn't have a pen or paper like normally these hotel rooms do have things to have like little notepads and I couldn't find anything in the room to just write something like a little note for the staff the cast members who do mousekeeping so hopefully they'll realize that the dollars is for them I don't know I wish I had a little note to like a little pad to write for them I might see if I can get something in the park so I couldn't find anything in the room by the way you definitely don't have to leave tips for mousekeeping cast members but it's just something nice to do and I thought why not so hopefully like I said they'll realize that it's for them we will see if not I'll try and find some paper somewhere but I'm now walking into the bus stop area like I said we're heading into Epcot I think that one over there is for Magic Kingdom which I was at yesterday so make sure you've watched the vlog for that oh that's annoying we must have just missed an Epcot bus because the next one says that it should be here at 2.12, 12 minutes past 2 p.m. Currently, as you can see, it's 1.54 p.m. So whilst I sit here and wait for my bus to Epcot for 10 or 15 minutes, I thought I did a quick outfit of the day. So again, I'm wearing my Birkenstock sandals on my feet and I've got my 
gap leggings that I bought about five, six years ago. I've got two pairs of these. And then I'm wearing a top over here, nice little pink top that I got from Dubai a couple of years ago. And then my ears, these are basically Club Disney ears that I, again, I must have bought in 2020. So I don't know if they sell them anymore, but they're very cute. I love the colors on them. So yeah, this is my day, outfit of the day. It is my day as well, but it's my outfit of the day for Epcot. And we do have a bus here. This one's Animal Kingdom's bus. We're not going to Animal Kingdom today. That's going to be tomorrow. Also, whilst I'm waiting for the bus, I wanted to give a big shout out to Wild for sponsoring this video. Now, you guys know I've been using Wild for over half a year now. It's my favorite deodorant to use. I love that it's reusable. I mean, look at this case. And this case is what I want to talk to you about today because Wild have recently partnered up with Copperfield. And Copperfield, if you didn't know, is the UK's first and so far only charity for breast cancer for young people. So a very important charity and one that is actually dear to my heart because breast cancer is one of those cancers that if detected early, it can easily be treated and survive. So it's really important to check your boobs. And I absolutely love the design of this new case. I mean, look at it. It is adorable, I love it. And these cases are just so durable as well. This is so, so cute. It kind of matches my uh, my pink shirt today. But yeah, I mean, Wild have so many different cases as well. Like I said, I've talked about Wild before on my channel. I absolutely love their products. They're not only environmentally friendly, but it's also very, very good as well. The deodorant is actually very good. It doesn't just look stylish, but it's really good as well. And I want to talk to you actually also today about a new scent that they have, which is a chocolate one. And you might think it's weird to smell of chocolate, but honestly, Oh, it smells beautiful. It's kind of like a subtle chocolatey fondue smell, but it is just delicious. And for a hot day like today, or most days, let's be honest, here in Florida, it's the perfect deodorant. They do have other scents as well, though one of my favorites is fresh cotton and sea salt. So just go on their website and see what smell kind of takes your fancy and check them out. They are honestly such a great company to work with and their products are genuinely really good. And the fact that they've partnered up with Copperfield as well, an incredible charity in the UK, makes me love them even more. And the cool thing is that Wild have said that they're going to be donating a minimum, a minimum of £10,000 from any sales from this case to Copperfield. So if you want to purchase yourself one of these cases, go to the link down below. I do have a discount code for you as well, so I'm going to leave it here on the screen and also in the description down below. You can get 20% off all Wild products if you want to purchase anything. This is the time. Like I said, I absolutely love this company and they have so many gorgeous cases. You can even have them customized if you want to check them out not only will it help the channel it will also support a great cause and you get an amazing case and a deodorant from it as well so thank you so much to Wild for sponsoring this video let's head to Epcot and just like that our bus has arrived celebrating 50 years of magic Epcot it's a cute mini red one as well look at her she looks so cute let's head on in And here we are at the Epcot bus stop. It's actually quite nice coming to Epcot with a bus because last time I was at Walt Disney World, we were very lucky to stay at the Beach Club, which is right next door to Epcot. So we had the walking pathway, we could walk to Epcot and we would get into Epcot from World Showcase, like that entrance on the other side of it. But now I get to go in from the main entrance, which is cool. It's always, I think I prefer, even though it was really cool and it was like a big perk, having that kind of private entrance when we stayed at the Beach Club coming from the other side of Epcot. I think there's something special about actually entering the park from the main entrance and seeing the Epcot ball or Spaceship Earth as people call it. Anyway, security is just here. Again, I absolutely love what they've done with security, how they've changed it since COVID and how you just literally walk through those little gates and that's how they check you. You don't have to open up your bag or anything. It's not done manually like it used to be. That security check literally only took 10 seconds, if that. It's the future of theme park security and I want it to be installed in Disneyland Paris and Disneyland California as well because in Disneyland California they're still doing it completely manually. At least Disneyland Paris has those like airport star security stuff. Look at that. Look at that ball. And I'm already spotting some topiaries inside. I have my pass here. I do want to make sure I get myself a magic band today, hopefully from Epcot because I think it's going to be easier, wouldn't it, actually having it here. And it reminds me of Disney World Holiday, so I kind of, I've been missing it a little bit, not having them. And just like that, we are in, officially inside Epcot. I'm going to grab myself a festival passport. There you go, I've got my passport here with me. It is on from March 1st to July the 5th, the Flower and Garden Festival here at Epcot. I am so looking forward to this afternoon here. And I'm sorry, but how beautiful are these topiaries? 
from Encanto, Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival here. We've got all the sisters, Antonio there as well. This is stunning. Here's a close look at them. We've got Isabella here. Uh, she looks amazing. I love the flowers on her. And then Antonio looking very, very happy. Of course, we've got Mirabel here and she's got a butterfly in her hand and you can actually go into like a butterfly place inside Epcot as well during the Flower and Garden Festival and of course we've got Louisa whose song is probably my favorite song in the entirety of Encanto the film. We've got a cute little flower there as well. Anyway, my plan for today is to just enjoy the Flower and Garden Festival. I want to try some snacks from the different booths. I want to enjoy the topiaries, maybe do some shopping because I haven't really done any shopping yet and I've not even, even really shown much merch to you guys either. And like I said, I definitely want to get myself a magic van today. And there are quite a lot of new things in Epcot that I just want to see. I know they have that Connections Cafe, I think that was opened up a few months ago. And Mouse Gear no longer exists, that's now changed into something else as well, Connections something. So it's the same, it's a shop again, just not uh, with a different name basically. And then of course we've got Guardians here. But I don't think I'm going to be able to get on that one today because I didn't manage to get myself a virtual queue situation. Obviously I didn't get into the park until about 2.20. And I think all the virtual queues happened before that. So that's going to be on my next uh, uh, Epcot day. But look at Spaceship Earth here. This attraction is phenomenal for sleeping. And I'm not tired yet, so we're not going to do that yet. Instead, we're just going to swiftly walk under the golf ball. Spaceship Earth's wall. Look at the queue for it, though. It's 15 minutes, but it always... I feel like this ride, the attraction, looks busier normally than it actually is because 15 minutes stand my way really isn't too bad but then you see all these crowds waiting outside and it makes you feel like lord have mercy it's going to be very long it's so nice getting a bit of breeze from time to time it is about 31 degrees celsius today so it is it's hot it's not obviously the hottest that you can get in florida because we are at the end of march the worst times to come here in my opinion are june july august just because of the heat for me i can't manage it personally but some people find it manageable and good for you i'm a little bit jealous um but yeah as you can see they still have some construction walls up here and i've got the project for epcot is still going on i'm looking forward to seeing how they manage it you know eventually what's going to happen to it because epcot has never been my favorite park i do enjoy some parts of it world showcase of course is beautiful and i'm probably going to spend most of my time there today i like the character meets here as well and the food of course i think the festivals is fantastic it's just i don't know i never get too excited about being here but like i said there are some new things to see today and look we've got the bubblegum wall here if you're wondering where it is it's literally kind of at the end of spaceship earth the attraction looks like it's been freshly painted as well i mean look at it it looks lovely literally just a wall that has become famous because people like taking photos in front of it i just spent about 10 minutes talking to a lovely custodial cast member gray his name was it was great we chatted about epcot about photo locations about names as well because initially i thought his name was gary just because of the way of saying g r a y and he said he gets that a lot and about how oh sorry i get life is just distracting in disney <laughs> Um, there's some water this but yeah, we we'll talk about how um, it's when you see a word quite often your brain just kind of sees the first letter of it and the last letter and kind of just makes it up and yeah just some interesting stuff but we are right next to the seas with Nemo and friends and that's where I saw the splash it's currently got a 10 minute standby wait time only so I think this is gonna be my first ride of the day fine, fine, fine. Bye, 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 bye. Now this is a cute ride, it's a family friendly ride, it's all about Nemo and friends as it is in the name and you get to go under the sea, it's kind of similar to the Little Mermaid's adventure in the Magic Kingdom except with Nemo so yeah looking forward to it. One of the cool things about this attraction is that it doesn't normally get very long lines so I don't think I've ever waited more than half an hour for it which is great. Hello one person, thank you so much, thank you. There you go, we are inside our little seashells and off we go. There's so much to know. Find the more explorers, it's time to go. What if Nemo's swimming out the sea? Oh, don't worry. <laughs> Just keep your eyes open for him along the way. Is he orange with white stripes and looks kind of like you, only smaller? Yes, have you seen him? Seen who? Hi, I'm Dory. Stop playing games! Games? I love games! Ooh, I'm thinking of something pink and bouncy that looks like a balloon. Ah, get to the fish and friends! <laughs> Thank 
to you? Well, that ride is normally only about maybe five, seven minutes. Today we were on it for about 15 minutes because it got stuck constantly. I don't mind. It just meant that I got to sit down for longer than I expected. And it looks like they've got a Finding Dory's Friends, a fantastic scavenger hunt going on here. Ah, wonder what this is. So they've got these little booklets and ah, oh, they've got stickers in there as well. I love this. One cool thing again about Walt Disney World is that they have so many cute free things and activities to do throughout the parks. I don't think I'm going to do this, but I just wanted to show it to you in case you're visiting. Especially if you've got kids, this could be a fun additional thing to do if they don't want to go on rides or meet characters. So there you go. Also, did you know that you can actually see some live animals here at Epcot? Even though we're not an animal kingdom, they do have some animals here. So sea turtles, sharks and rays, as well as even dolphins. You can find them in the upper level. We might go and check them out. And then lower level has Turtle Talk with Crush, which is an attraction, and then a few more animals. I've been to Walt Disney World, I want to say about seven or eight times now. And I don't think I've ever bothered actually going up to check out the dolphin. So we're going to do it today. Oh, actually, never mind. This is bringing back memories. I think I have been here once before, and it must have been on my first trip here in 2015, because my friend Rebecca Defer would have wanted to come and see this. So there you go. You've got some fish here in this giant aquarium all sorts of different fish as well and then as we head on to here oh my god there you go i was about to say we should be able to see some dolphins and then look at that so many cool fish epcot can be a really really fun park guys for kids i love it i mean obviously it's fun for me as well i'm enjoying seeing all these oh my god that's a giant one look at them this aquarium is huge and look at that the dolphin swimming so cutely oh i love dolphins they look so so happy all the time i feel very blue at the moment the colors are interesting but yeah awesome awesome place to come and enjoy some water animals uh, fish dolphins sharks etc like i said amazing for kids especially because children love seeing these things right and look how cool this is there are even some people inside the water i'm not sure if they're just there to observe the animals if they're cast members i'm not quite sure i don't know if you can actually pay to do this yourself in any case it is so so awesome anyway i think i'm gonna next head into the land to do a couple of attractions in there just because it seems natural it's the next thing that i'm walking past right now so the land is an interesting pavilion it's basically a building where it hosts a number of different attractions such as soaring living with the land of course and then we've got garden wheel the restaurant which i have eaten at once before and they've got a couple of other things going on as well as well as i believe a quick service restaurant which is called sunshine seasons i believe it's the area down there and of course you can see soaring over there garden grill right there in front of me and then yeah living with the land to my right and i think i'm just going to be heading over to living with the land first soaring currently has a 40 minute wait not sure if i'm prepared to queue for it that long today so let's start with living with the land on the way down to living with the land i wanted to quickly talk about garden grill the restaurant because it's a very very popular restaurant here at walt disney world it's one that is quite difficult to actually get a reservation for i have eaten there once before and i didn't actually like it that much in 2017 you can check it out in my vlogs but whilst i've been looking to make my reservations for this trip i noticed that there was not a single garden grill reservation throughout the 14 days that i'm here so like i said an incredibly popular one is a character dining restaurant and you get to meet Chippendale, I think Mickey and Pluto perhaps. And they've got like their kind of farmer's outfits, kind of gardeny vibes, you know, in theme with the whole living with the land and being in the land pavilion, that sort of thing. The character interactions are, of course, pretty cute. But the restaurant itself, I don't particularly find that exciting. It's family style dining. So you get kind of like American dishes. Uh, they've got steaks, I think meats, mashed potato, that sort of thing. And by family style, I mean that they put like a bunch of food on the table and I think you can ask for more if you want to but it's sharing so it's not like a full-on menu where you get to choose what you want it's kind of the same menu more or less for everyone unless you're vegan or you have an allergy of course then you can let them know and I'm sure they'll have something for you but the concept of it I just don't particularly understand or enjoy what the restaurant does is that it very slowly spins so for me that idea alone not a big fan I've been to other spinning restaurants before they've got loads of them in different cities there's one in Vienna there's one in London there's one in Brighton but with this one I don't really get the point of it spinning because normally the spinning restaurants are like up high so you get really nice views of a city or the sea or something like that with living with the land you literally just go around and you see I don't know parts of living with the land maybe the attraction just not a lot so I remember when I dined there I was a bit like I don't I don't get it why are we why are we spinning and don't get me wrong it's not like a quick spinning around so you're not gonna feel motion sick or anything hopefully but 
Let me know in the comments down below if you've eaten at Garden Grill. Do you like it? Why do people love it so much? Because I don't get it. I've never once felt the need to come back to it ever since I ate there in 2017. But you know, people have different tastes and I'd love to know your thoughts on it. Anyway, looks like Living With The Land has a 20 minute standby wait time, which is longer than I was hoping for, to be honest. And there seems to be quite a lot of people actually waiting for it. Because I always like testing these out, I'm gonna start the time watch to see if it is indeed 20 minutes. Let's join the queue. So the boat has just arrived. I am actually gonna be on the front row. A very lovely cast member asked me if I wanted to be on the front and I was like, why not? So there you go. Woo. And just in case you're wondering, I'm just gonna stop this. It only took about 16 minutes, so four minutes less than they advertised. Let's go. Welcome to our living laboratory, where scientists from Epcot and the U.S. Department of Agriculture are exploring innovative ways to produce bountiful harvests now and into the future. The tropics are home to the greatest diversity of plants on the planet. Many of these, like papaya, bananas, cacao, coffee, and rice, are well known around the world. While there are more than 50,000 edible plant species in the world, most of us are only familiar with the handful that make up our everyday diet. I just came off living with the land and I bumped into a lovely, what's your name? Melita. And? Keenan. Where are you from guys? South, South Africa. Africa. And you're on holiday here for two weeks as well. Yes. yes. Enjoying yourself so far? Yes. Quite a bit. <laughs> oh, amazing. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for watching the video. Thanks for saying hi. It is always so, so lovely meeting you guys, especially when it's not in Disneyland Paris. I never expect it. So thank you again for saying hi. Living with the land though, Lord have mercy. <laughs> it's one of those rides where it goes longer than it should in my opinion. It's a nice sit down, but it's just, I don't really know how children would find it. Let me know if you've got children. Do they actually enjoy the ride? Is it exciting enough for them? Because I'm just not sure who is catered for the ride. I know a lot of people tend to love it, but I truly think they only say they love it because it's a nice sit down, because there really isn't much else to it. It's quite boring, it's quite dull, dull. It's educational, I will give it that it is quite educational, but then not enough educational. So it's like, it kind of is on the surface. So if you're already into agriculture and gardening and things like that, you probably already know all of it. And if you don't care, you might just be like, why am I even here? And children are probably gonna find it boring. Just my opinion. Um, I did find it interesting because as I left the ride, once it finished, I was obviously on the front row, so I could hear a couple of people behind me. The couple right behind me, they were like, oh, we should do it again. And like the guy laughed about it being a nice sit down and how he wants to just do it again because it was nice to be sat down and not walking. And then as we got off, I heard, I overheard um, another couple. And the girl was like, I need another cocktail after that. So it's just very different opinions, right? And I think I fall under the category that I think it's nice for a sit down, but it is a very boring attraction. So I'd love to hear your thoughts again. That's cool. They've got a cart here that says healthy snacks, as it says there. I'm guessing loads of fruits and veggies, etc. Also, one of the facts about living with the land, the ride, is that apparently the stuff that they have there in within the attraction, because they actually do do some gardening in there, they use some of it at Garden Grill Restaurant, which is quite cool because it's nice and fresh and you know that it's come from the ride. But I am going to head into the butterfly landing, even though I'm kind of scared of butterflies just uh, for you guys I feel like it might be fun to go I have done this once before with my friend Jane in 2017 and it was terrifying but let's head in there you go loads and loads of butterflies around some beautiful colors a variety of them and actually there you go it talks a little bit about how you can plant your own butterfly habitat as well in your own garden if you have one which is quite cute look at that they've got information about all the different kinds of species of butterflies here Coral honeysuckle, that one is called. Tropical milkweed. I mean, this is pretty cool to be fair. Look at all those butterflies up there. I know a lot of people love them so much that they want them to come and like sit on their fingers. That would be my worst nightmare, so I'm not gonna try for that. But yeah, I like that sort of thing. Like, look at this sign here as well. It says, welcome to the butterfly house. Spending time in nature is a great way to relax, rejuvenate and practice mindfulness. The art of living in the moment. That's actually really nice to know and remember. There were literally butterflies flying off everywhere around me. And the music they're playing as well, I don't know if you can hear it or not. It's actually quite relaxing. Do you know what? 
I don't know why I was scared of coming in here. I think when I came last time with my friend Jane, maybe it was later in the evening, and for some reason the butterflies were just everywhere. And they are everywhere at the moment as well, but they're not like in my face like, the way they were last time. I could spend more time in here. Ooh. Oh, see, I got a little shaky there because one went quickly past me. <sighs> I don't know, I'm, I'm weird. I have a fear of things that fly generally. So butterflies are no exceptions, but they are beautiful. I will give them that. And it's so cool seeing so many different varieties here, so many different colors. Fun fact for you, my grandma, so she's passed away now, but her name was a butterfly, not butterfly in English, Haravone. Uh, in Persian, her name Haravone means butterfly. So I've always loved butterflies, but I've always been scared of them as well. So there you go, nice little personal fact about me here. But yeah, that butterfly thing was cute. I enjoy that. They've got it on until the 4th of July, I believe, which is when the Flower and Garden Festival ends. So if you are visiting Walt Disney World and Epcot specifically over the next three or four months, then it's worth checking out, especially if you enjoy butterflies. But even if you don't like, I mean, like I said, I am quite scared of them. It's still a calming environment, but I am now heading towards Journey into Imagination. And I don't really know why, because you guys know how I feel about figment. They actually even have a figment topiary right at the entrance, which to be fair, the topiary does look quite cute, I have to be honest. But I'm not going to go on the ride, I don't think. It is very hot. I'm just trying to avoid staying in the heat for too long. I kind of want to go and see if I can potentially maybe meet Joy in there, because I know that Joy does do a meet and greet in there. Before we do that though, look at Pooh. Pooh, you look so cute. How are you doing? Enjoying the, the, the scenes and the scenery? It's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> I just went and saw some butterflies. You probably would have enjoyed it. Yeah, oh, I love that. <laughs> You've seen some as well? Oh, cute. Oh, lovely. Yeah, it's nice to catch some sometimes. It's so cute. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that your, your thing over there. Cool. Have you had some honey today? Okay, okay. So good to see you anyway, Pooh Bear. <laughs> How cute was Pooh? Anyway, Image Works is where we need to go to meet Joy. From inside out, this is the building where Figment, the attraction, is also. And I think most people coming out have probably just been on Figment, but I'm not bothered about the ride. Not today. I will probably ride it on a different day on this trip. And when you come inside Image Works, it's kind of like the shop at the end of Figment, the attraction. They've still got all these new Pixar stuff that I've seen in Disneyland Paris as well, though I haven't seen this before. Cute little, very fluffy bucket hats that's cute but yeah it's not a very big shop they've got all your standard stuff some figment things from time to time as well of course because it is the end of figment attractions shop i have to say i quite like this monsters university you guys know how much i love my beanies how much is this one uh 24.99 not bad obviously way too warm to be wearing that right now in florida but for the uk and paris quite good of course they have a figment plush here Shout out to my friend Marie. When I came to Walt Disney World with my friend Marie in January of 2018, she she enjoys annoying me, so she pretended that she enjoyed Figment, the attraction, like as a joke. So she enjoyed it because it was funny. So she kind of made me go on it like two or three times, <laughs> and she even bought herself a Figment T-shirt. This is my friend Marie. You've probably seen her in some of my vlogs. That's just her humor. But this looks to be the spot for Joy, Imagination Land. I did meet her last time I was here as well. It used to actually be Joy and Sadness and they had a different place to meet. But now it's here and it's only Joy. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing a photo pass person either. So it looks like it's just cast members. Oh, well, I'm going to join the line anyway. Also, Vanilla is on the other side. So this is actually a really fun place to meet. A couple of characters at once and it's indoors, which is always a bonus because you don't want to be in the heat too long. Inside our music as she comes out as well. Very
Well that was cute. I wasn't planning on showing joy at my joy and sadness tattoos but it just happened as I was chatting to her. I also wasn't planning on mentioning the word COVID to her because she doesn't deserve to know about the awful <laughs> world that we live in. But um, it was really lovely. The cast member loved it. Everybody in the queue seemed to like get excited about my tattoos and as I was leaving as well somebody at the end of the queue was like oh my god that was so cool your tattoos. Who would have thought? Look at this awesome shot by the way. The monorail coming through with the beauty of Epcot Flower and Garden Festival as well. Also speaking of the International Flower and Garden Festival, here are some more topiaries for you. This one's quite popular, people are taking photos right next to it, but yeah, it's of course the Lion King. And just like that we have come to probably the most famous of the topiary bunches here. We've got Chippendale, Mickey Mouse, Mini Pluto, Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival 2023. I love it. I think this might be kind of on the way to the entrance of the World Showcase. It is pretty sad to see Epcot closed off so much though. Like you can't really even get close to uh, the golf ball, Spaceship Earth. They've got so many construction walls going on here. You can only go from around it. And I was really confused when I got here because normally you should be able to go there and actually for the festivals, they often have quite a lot of things going on closer to the ball. But no, this whole area is uh, under construction, which is sad. So there's the Mickey and Minnie topiaries that we just saw. That's the creation shop actually, which used to be mouse gear. I think we're gonna check that out later because Lord have mercy guys, I am very, very hungry. The time, nearly 5 p.m. I always just forget to eat because I get excited about other things. So all I've had today is actually the Rice Krispie treat that I had this morning as my breakfast. I haven't had lunch yet. Who knows if I'll be able to have dinner. So I think, I don't know, I was hoping to find some of the booths, some of the festival booths, but I haven't actually seen any yet. And I think part of it is because they've got that bit closed off, so I really don't know where to go. And I don't want to use too much of my battery on my phone. That's the problem with these things. So I think I'm just going to wander around, head towards World Showcase. I'm sure there'll be something there to eat. And hopefully we can try some of the festival booths as well. Look at this Figment 50th anniversary statue going on here on our way to World Showcase, by the way. <laughs> Gotta love him. I mean truly I actually don't love him at all, but he is one of the popular icons of Epcot He's actually gonna have his own meeting week coming up soon at Epcot <sighs> Gotta love the monorail the monorail I do actually enjoy unlike with figments and it looks like they've got goofy here as another iconic topiary very cool on a side note i've seen quite a lot of people with selfie sticks in epcot today and supposedly they're meant to be banned they're definitely banned in disneyland paris but i sometimes see them there as well it's one of those things where i guess you can't fully stop people from bringing them in or using them but they can be dangerous to guess so probably not the best to bring them also i've just run into a couple of other statues for the 50th anniversary which i'm guessing they won't be here for much longer because the 50th anniversary celebrations are meant to officially end at the end of march but of course it's Miguel and Dante from Coco and with that we are officially finally starting our journey into the world showcase I normally like to go from Mexico first just because to me it makes sense to go left but there's a whole debate about which side is the right side there is no right side just go wherever you want okay exciting so we've got our first festival booth here it's called Florida Fresh a lovely cast member pointed out to me and I am honestly so hungry that I think I'm just gonna get something here the menu involves a grilled street corn on the cob with savory garlic spread and spicy corn chips that's probably what I'm gonna go for that is five seventy five dollars then they've got another one with a plant-based cojita chip cheese okay so I guess this would just be a full-on vegan option in fact I think they both they're both vegan options that's pretty cool to know a blackened fish slider that also sounds good actually the photo looks pretty amazing and then they've got a watermelon salad so a lot of the things are as it's in the name Florida fresh fresh products and I'm probably just gonna go for the grilled corn and the cup so I just ordered I went for the first option as I said there was a bit of a queue as well but now I'm just waiting to receive my corn and the cup here and there we have it this yeah. beautiful looking corn on the cob with spicy chips on it and a garlic uh, sauce I believe as well and you can see Spaceship Earth the Epcot ball in the distance I am really looking forward to it I mean it is pretty hot and of course this is hot food so it might not be the best thing to eat at the moment ice cream would have been better but I like garlic stuff and this is the first thing I saw just in case you're wondering about the size as well it's pretty hefty I'll say for $5.75 oh, it smells so nice and garlicky I'm really looking forward to taking a bite out of this. Wow. 
That is delicious. That's so good. The spicy chips on the outside add an element of crunch to it, which is lovely, and they are actually quite spicy as well, which I enjoy. You very much get the garlic flavor as well, which is amazing. And this is a delicious snack. I'm so happy I found it and came across it just so randomly. And it's vegan as well. This is a vegan snack, so completely plant-based. Nothing about this has animal products in it, so if you are vegan, and you happen to be here at the Flower and Garden International Festival in Epcot, then I would highly recommend this to you. I'm loving it. Well, we are off to a very good start with our Flower and Garden snacks here. The one from Fresh, Florida Fresh, sorry, the booth. Really enjoyed that corn on the cob. We've got some more topiaries here. The three caballeros. There you go, very cute. I actually can't wait to go on the ride in Mexico, hopefully, if it hasn't got a big, long waiting line. Before we continue on to the World Showcase, so I want to show you this as well. So the next booth that there's available here is the Citrus Blossom one. You can get this little orange bird, like, sipper cup, I suppose. And in terms of the menu, they have a variety of things. Again, they've got some shrimps, tempura shrimps, orange flavored, sounds good. Citric baked brie and lemon meringue pie. So that is actually in there. I'm not gonna head in there right now because none of the items on the menu intrigue me that much. Maybe the shrimp, but I'm sure we'll be able to find something better later on. Here we go, we're in the Mexican pavilion now. About to go in to go on the Grand Fiesta tour, which is a lovely, nice relaxing boat cruise. It normally doesn't have much of a wait time either. So hopefully that should be the case today a few moments later you know it's a busy day when there's a queue to actually get inside this building normally you can just walk straight on in but no people are actually queuing to come in it has been busy the past couple of days of being in Disney World. It is spring break, it's at the end of March. People have holidays, Easter, spring breaks, etc. So I think they're not surprising to be fair, just wish it wasn't so busy. I love the Mexican pavilion. It just looks so beautiful, especially inside this building, which I'm not, I don't know what the name of the building is that we're in right now, but it has loads of different shops, the Grand Fiesta tour, the ride is down there. And it also has a restaurant, which my friends and I ate at that restaurant on our very first trip. June of 2015, you would have seen the vlogs potentially, but they are on my channel if you haven't, if you want to check them out. Look, they've even got special Mexico ears. Very colorful, I love the bow. And you can also get a matching bag to go with it. It's so nice. You can even get t-shirts with Mexico on them, like a sports t-shirt, I suppose, but it's got Mickey, a Mickey silhouette on it. Let's have a look at some of these pins. So most of these pins t tend to be um, like cocoa ones, which are cute. I like that one as well, it says Mexico and it's mini and again I love all the details of flowers I would love to go to Mexico one day they've even got some blind box cocoa ones here very cute and the Grand Fiesta tour actually has quite a bit of a line today my guess is it's probably going to be about 20 minutes or so I've just joined it so I'm going to start the time watch just out of curiosity but hopefully it should be moving quite quickly it's an omni mover it's a boat ride so it does tend to move quickly hi to book you got here hello amigos how are you nice to meet you nice to meet you too thank you so much for watching the vlog rodrigo you're amazing Hope can't you wait did. to go on the ride we're really excited to have you please enjoy the ride thank you thank you that was so cute and big shout out to rodrigo he's a cast member at the entrance of the grand fiesta tour like kind of organizing the queue and he was saying hello to everyone and welcome in mexican to everyone in front of me and then when he got to me he said hello to me and then he was like hi sam and i was like oh my god how does he know my name and then he said that he watches the video so rodrigo if you end up watching this vlog you're amazing it was so lovely meeting you hello one person Number two? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, not long left now until we get on the ride, so I'm actually going to stop the time watch. It only took 10 minutes. Not bad at all. Oh, no, you don't! Oh, no, you don't. 
Grand Fiesta tour was queued as always. The next pavilion is Norway, which is where I'm at at the moment. Unfortunately, Frozen Ever After, the ride which I was hoping to go on, is actually closed at the moment, it's gone down. And the cast members in Norway are phenomenal. I mean, cast members generally are phenomenal, but because the ride is down and I'm guessing so many people are obviously waiting in queue, as I got here, I noticed that there was like a bunch of them, a group of them just singing a cappella, trying to entertain the children. So let's go to a clip of that now. We're better than me and you! We're going to Elsa's Ice Palace with you and you and you and all of you! See you there! But whilst we're here, I thought I'd show you Elsa and Anna in their toe performs. I've definitely seen those before. I, in fact, have even have a photo with Elsa from 2019, the same tour period, but they're still very cute to see. Also, as I was walking from Mexico to Norway, I noticed the barges, the infamous barges that have been installed for um, Harmonious, which is a nighttime show in Epcot. That's only going to be here for another like two weeks. I think it's ending on the 3rd or 4th of April 2023. And I'm going to be here for it as well for the final showing. I'm not going to be in this park, I don't think, but I'm going to be in Walt Disney World. And I, I think they're bringing back Epcot Forever, which is a nice I'm sure that I have seen as well is like a temporary one that they're bringing back. That one's all right. It involves a lot of figments and you guys know how I feel about figments. But the barges, it was really interesting seeing them in person because I've heard so many people complain about like just how ugly they look and how they make your eyesight and the eye lines of the whole World Showcase situation awful. And in videos, it doesn't look too bad. Like I'd see them in videos and I'd be like, why are people complaining? But in person, I can see why, what, what people mean. Like it is, it is a bit annoying seeing them. So. They'll be gone very soon, two more weeks left of them. I'm actually excited to see Harmonious though. My friend Eddie was in Walt Disney World last August and he really enjoyed Harmonious and he told me that he thinks I would enjoy as well because apparently it involves quite a bit of Pocahontas. Hi from Notre Dame, he said as well, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, I can't wait for that tonight. Also, look at this beautiful troll topiary here. I don't think I've ever seen this one before. And you guys know, if you've watched any of my previous Walt Disney World vlogs, there's a troll inside one of these shops here in Norway that I like to send my love to every single time I visit. And inside that building, the fjording is where we find my favorite troll also you can see people coming out of frozen ever after unfortunately as i said the ride has been down for a while now so people are now exiting it but we are going to enter this shop and literally right as you enter you see the big troll statue i feel like i've got a photo with him on every single one of my visits to walt disney world ever since i came in 2015 so i feel like we might have to get another one again today check out my instagram to see it look at his nose though <laughs> Oh, he's always so friendly and happy. I need to go to Norway desperately. Like, I've been talking about going to Norway for so long. I've been wanting to go since I was a child, since I was about seven or eight years old, because I used to be obsessed with a girl band from Norway called M2M. You might have heard of them. You may have no idea who I'm talking about, but they used to be a pop kind of duo girl act called M2M. They came from Norway and I love them. Me and my brother used to always listen to them. They were almost as famous as S Club 7, maybe even more famous, just kind of more so in America, like the US and obviously also in Norway, but not as quite as much, I suppose, in the UK. But yeah, their songs were great. They were a very, very fun um, act as well. And ever since then, like I said, I've been wanting to come to Norway. I still haven't done it. Maybe we should go on like a Disney cruise that goes to Norway. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. I love the Norway merch they have here though. Look at that. Look how beautiful this is. There's Norway Epcot World Showcase. Love the little Mickey here. And then they've got those ears. The ears are stunning. I think I saw these in California as well last year, but like I just don't see why I would get them because it says Norway on them. I feel like I don't deserve to have them yet. Maybe once I eventually hopefully visit Norway then I feel like I'd feel more comfortable wearing these, but they are beautiful, aren't they? Like the colours, the embroidery, look at that. Oh, <laughs> I'm so tempted to buy them. Let me know if you think it'd be weird to buy a pair of ears that say Norway on them, if I've never even been to Norway, and if I'm not Norwegian. I mean, I guess it's probably not that weird because I can, it literally says World Showcase on them as well. So, and I have been to Norway in World Showcase. But I don't know, I just have this thing where I feel like I can't, I don't know. Look at these mugs though. Oh wow, these are huge. I just love the little subtle hints of Disney on them. Like they're very much um, Nordic vibes and designs, but then they have a hint of Disney on them. I have been to Iceland and I do have an Iceland vlog on my channel as well if you wanna check it out from 2021. So go and check that out if you want to. Iceland was awesome, really beautiful, but Norway still is on the list unfortunately hopefully soon hopefully soon another t-shirt i absolutely love look at that so cool i will get that one day 
once I go to Norway, sure. And then they've got another one here too. So many cute things, look at that. That's like a keychain, very fun. It's just so sparkly. I love just the design, it says Norway on there as well. And you've got a little flower here. So many beautiful things. And then a slightly not so beautiful thing in me. I'm very hot and very sweaty. It is sometime later now. It's actually probably been about two hours since I last spoke to you. I spent the last couple of hours filming another video that should be coming out after this whole series is done. So make sure you subscribe for that. And also I rang my mom as well because some of you might not know, but my mom was in a terrible hit and run accident back in January. She's doing better now, but obviously I still like to check on her as often as I possibly can, especially before she goes to bed, because obviously London is about four or five hours ahead at the moment. But as you can see, I have now left the world showcase i am kind of back at the entrance of it the main entrance oh you can see the barge over there as well yeah it's currently 7 30 p.m and harmonia should be starting in an hour and a half now my friend eddie who i mentioned he was here in august and he recommended a really good spot to watch harmonious from he told me about this before i came here and i kind of forgot where it was so i messaged him earlier and i asked him can you remind me where is the best place to sit or stand to watch the show and he told me at the entrance of world showcase and because frozen ever after was also not going on and it's kind of towards later evening as well i thought i might as well do world showcase the next time i'm at epcot so maybe in a few days time i can't remember when my next epcot reservation is look at the monorail going past but yeah I, i've got another couple of days in epcot on this trip so hopefully i can tackle the rest of world showcase then but yeah i'm back here and i also want to try a few more of the festival booth items just even maybe one more would be nice so i need to just find one and try something look at that cool view of the epcot ball though with the palm trees and all the colorful plants everywhere i wanted to quickly take you inside disney traders which is the shop here because i think they might have some of the festival items merchandise inside and this is basically this year's um scavenger hunt so you can get a map for ten dollars plus tax and then if you still can't remember they'll give you the details and you go around the world showcase in every single pavilion you have to find something i presume it's going to be probably the orange bird or maybe the bumblebee that they've got going on as the icon of this festival and yeah once you complete it you go as your cast member and you can win a prize i've just noticed they actually also have one for easter so a separate one this one's like more about eggs i'm guessing you have to look for eggs around the world showcase that one's also ten dollars though let me in the comments down below if you've seen me do any of these scavenger hunts before because i've been doing them again since 2017 i've done them maybe about three or four times and i've got like separate videos on my channel from previous years where i've gone around the world showcase trying to find them and win the prize as well obviously unfortunately i'm not going to have the time to do it on this trip but i do have some videos in the past that you can check out if you want to this shop was deceiving though i thought i was gonna be able to find some merchandise from the festival but no it's mainly marvel stuff and just really random things like they've got pins a selection of pins that's quite a nice one that spider-man's really cute this one's from the hundred years of disney celebration actually they've got some more marvel merch here very random i guess they've designated this shop for marvel stuff mainly they've got some uh, toys as well some caps over here and yeah it seems to be mainly a marvel themed shop it definitely didn't used to be like this the last time i was here but i guess they've changed it around a bit this is a cool ornament i think this is from wakanda forever let me know if i'm wrong i see what eddie meant by the way people have already started taking their spots here for harmonious starting in just over an hour at this point now you can see some of the skylines from the other side we've got the eiffel tower for the french pavilion the france pavilion, which we haven't gone to yet but yeah eddie said this is a good view so uh the time at the moment we've still got whew, one hour and 20 minutes until showtime so i think i have enough time to quickly head into the creation shop formerly known as mouse gear just to have a look around because like i said i haven't really done much even window shopping yet and i really do want to get that magic brand and i feel like the creation shop might end up being very very busy after the fireworks after the harmonious nighttime show so let's head in now and have a quick look firstly i love what they've done with the space so i'm pretty sure it's very close to where mouse gear was but not exactly the same area but yeah, it looks very nice, very spacious. Loads of merch everywhere as well. They've got a lot of Orange Bird merch because the Orange Bird is the symbol of the Flower and Garden Festival. Now, I do prefer the Orange Bird to Figment, even though I still find him to be a very random character. Like, he's just an orange bird. I mean, he's adorable. Not gonna lie, he's definitely cuter than Figment. No offense to Figment lovers out there. But again, unfortunately, it's not enough of a thing for me to want to purchase anything from it. But look, they've got a whole range over here, including this full-on lounge fly, which I believe when it was first released a few weeks ago at the start of the uh, festival, it got sold out immediately. But they do have some left, and the price for these, let's have a look. $85, 
kind of a standard price for a lounge fly. I like the handle here. Yeah, I mean, it's cute. It's very orange. I do understand it's an orange bird. But like I said, I don't really personally get it. So not something I would buy. They've even got a spirit jersey for him. Look, he is adorable to be fair. The spirit jersey I do enjoy. I probably would have preferred it if it wasn't just like this random cut in the middle with two different colors. Let's see what it says on the back. The back says, spread in the sunshine. And it does say flowers, Florida, USA here. And I mean, like I said, very cute uh, design. Just not personally my thing. You can see this gentleman over here modeling the spirit jersey with a cute orange bird on the pocket. They've even got mugs. The orange bird has a full range of merchandise here for the festival. It's crazy. I wish they would do something like this for like the Hunchback of Notre Dame or Pocahontas or some of the very well-loved Disney films of the 90s instead of a random character from Orlando. They still seem to have some Epcot 40th anniversary merchandise here. This one's cute. I like the color of this blue t-shirt a lot. This one's $30. Does it have anything on the back? Oh yeah, a full-on thing on the back. It says, celebrating 40 years of imagination. And Figment has literally ruined this t-shirt for me personally. Like I said, just not my thing. Some people enjoy him and that's absolutely fine. You can see some more Epcot 40th merchandise here, including some of these bottles that are actually 40% off for limited time bonus. I guess they didn't really sell as much as Disney was hoping to. And they've even got this uh, lounge fly for Epcot's 40th anniversary. This one's quite cute. I like it. I hope they do something like this for Disneyland Paris. I mean, they did quite a few different things for the 30th of Disneyland Paris, but it'd be cool to have them more often, just more specific things. I love it. I like the ball, cute. They've even got a spirit jersey, look. Epcot 40, and then it's got this detail on the side. That's pretty cool. And then they've got the ears to go with it. Speaking of Pocahontas, look at that. How fun is this? It's Miko very cute fifty dollars that's the only thing though he doesn't have his own range or anything it's not even pocahontas it's just miko but still pretty cool oh this is lovely this is nice i like the design of it is it meant to be just like different animals different cats and dogs seems like it this place is huge and i mean huge there's a whole section over there that says hats on it and i love hats so i am approaching this hat section area although i'm not really seeing too many hats there are a couple of caps over here there's that monsters university one that we saw earlier and then a few more it mainly seems to be ears and quite a lot of ears actually these ones i don't think i've seen before firework ones i think they're from the mickey mouse the main attraction range they're quite nice and then what have we got here this one again epcot 40th they've got some character hats here like that donald one pluto goofy as a child my brother and i used to have the pluto caps they obviously didn't look quite as nice as the ones they have now because it was back in the 90s but we did wear them to Disneyland Paris all the time and then we've got this Tinkerbell lounge fly that I don't think I've seen before shout out to my friend Rebecca she loves Tinkerbell Tinkerbell has so many different lounge flies though I feel like they're overdoing it with Tink like give the other characters from Disney a chance oh yeah these are the eggs by the way so I think if you win the Easter um, scavenger hunt that I showed you earlier you can then choose one of these little eggs as your gift these seem to be some of the last 50th anniversary merchandise left in Walt Disney World. These are the statues that we saw, so we've already seen these around the park, and you can actually get a full-on box of them. They also do have some of the plushes left here as well, so look, they've got a Daisy one over here in her 50th anniversary, and then Donald. He's not wearing a hat though, which is a little bit strange. I feel like I prefer Donald with his hat on. Here we've got another Donald. Who else have we got? Oh yeah, Goofy's an outfit's quite dapper. I still need to see the cavalcade that they were going on. I've only got another week or so to see the cavalcade. It's in Magic Kingdom. And then, oh, this is lovely. That's nice. It says Disney on the back though instead of Walt Disney World for some reason. Then you've got the castle. I wish it said Disney. Oh, does it say Walt Disney World? Let me just double check. It's just quite diff different to what, oh yeah, it does say Walt Disney World. So it's Walt, Disney in the middle with Tink, of course. And then on the other side, let me get it. It says Walt. That's a pretty cool spirit jersey. I really enjoy the color. I kind of wish it just said Walt Disney World, they're like in this normal style, normal font, rather than the way they've done it. But I don't know. I'm thinking of getting a 50th anniversary spirit jersey, but I haven't really seen any so far that I've fallen in love with. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this one though. Oh yeah, and loads of 50th anniversary lounge fly bags going on here. Quite a nice style, it's quite chic, you know, not too out there in terms of the style. Let's see the price. These ones are also $85. Yeah, they're quite nice. Oh no, I've just found a spirit jersey that I do like from the 50th anniversary, but they've literally only got smalls left and one single medium. But my spirit jersey size is normally a large. 
and I just don't think a medium is going to do it unfortunately but look how cool this is so it says the 50th on the castle here on the logo and then the sleeves the sleeves are what really sold it to me we've got Mickey and Donald on one side and then on the other side we've got Pluto and Goofy and then I just love the back as well how it's like the typical style of Walt Disney World I love the font shame maybe I'll have to look around and see if I can find an L but it clearly was quite a popular one that's why they only have small ones left here how cute are these lounge fly bags guys look at them it's Woody and Bo Peep am I a little bit jealous perhaps of Bo Peep that is <laughs> it's very cute I love the heart shaped thing and then the stars and the clouds oh you've got Bo Peep's sheep on the back this is cute this is a cute lounge fly that I hadn't seen before and of course, of course it's Toy Story. Cool, well I think I'm just gonna shop around a little bit. We've still got quite a while until the show and I haven't actually seen any magic vans and I'm sure they'll have some. I just need to ask a cast member or maybe look a bit further. And yeah, I'll let you know if I end up buying anything. Okay, I am outside of the shop now. Creation shop, sorry, Connections is a cafe, Creations is a shop. And as you might be able to see, I do have a reusable bag here with me honestly don't get excited i didn't actually buy much i got myself a spirit jersey the same spirit jersey that i spotted in magic kingdom yesterday if you haven't checked out my vlog from yesterday please make sure you do after you finish watching this one but i saw this awesome looking kind of blue with white spots spirit jersey in tomorrowland yesterday and i wasn't able to purchase it because it was in the middle of the day and i didn't really want to carry anything with me and unfortunately disney have stopped the service of sending things over to your hotel as they used to before the pandemic so i didn't buy it yesterday and i didn't think i'd probably be able to find it again but they had quite a lot of, of, of spirit residents in stock here and so i got that one in a size l and then i had a look at that magic bands as well i asked the cast member and there was a whole section dedicated to magic bands but unfortunately they were all magic bands plus or magic band plus whatever it's called these like new magic bands that were released about a year or so ago that you have to actually charge now i wear an apple watch if you can tell i need to charge my apple watch on a nightly basis otherwise it doesn't have any battery and of course i have to charge so many other things as well like you guys my phone things like that so having to have an extra thing to charge just really doesn't appeal to me especially when it's a thing that is only going to be used here in walt disney world and also they're quite expensive compared to normal regular magic bands these are like i think 40 50 dollars each because apparently they're meant to do special things with like the fireworks show the things changes lights i don't know there's something magical about them and i get the appeal for children perhaps but I don't know, I had a look at some of the designs and they did have quite a lot of cute designs to be fair for Magic Band Plus but um, I don't know yet, there were a couple that I kind of enjoyed, there was one 50th anniversary one and then one that just kind of said 2023 Walt Disney World so I thought that might be cute but I just, I need to think about it still, it's one of those things where I was hoping to find a regular Magic Band like they used to have them, look at the Epcot ball there behind me, it kind of looks like the moon but yeah the cast members said they really don't have many of those left anymore they had only one at creation shop and it was like a star wars one or something that i really didn't really care much about so no magic band so in here really is only that spirit jersey i also got a keychain you'll see all of that in my disney world haul and then a bottle of water so that i can drink some water and be hydrated whilst i watch harmonious but yeah a bit disappointed about the magic band situation speaking of apple watches the time is now about 20 minutes past 8 pm and we've only got about 40 minutes left now to go until Harmonia starts. So I'm heading towards that way as are so many other people as well. So people have gathered around this area and I'm gonna hopefully try and find a little spot as well. It is only me obviously being a solo traveler makes things a little bit easier, especially for situations like this. Look at the crowds though. Eddie wasn't kidding. Like this is, seems to be a good spot because loads of people are already waiting here. And I've got a seat. Thankfully it really wasn't too difficult. Hopefully the view should be okay. I'm not sure if I'm in the perfect place or not, but I'm in the area, like rough area that Eddie said to watch Harmonious. I'm very much looking forward to it. So I'm gonna spend the next 40 minutes or so sipping on some water, some smart water that I got also from the creation shop as well as the spirit jersey. I love it when they sell smart water. I much prefer this one to the Sani. Sorry, I'm weird, I like judging <laughs> bottled water. Not a big fan of the Sani, I'm afraid, but yeah, I guess I'll next speak to you or maybe I'll speak to you either just before the show or more than likely after Harmonious has ended. Can't wait. Tonight, we invite you to join us for Harmonious, a spectacular celebration of the magic that happens when music connects us around the world. Due to lower light levels, we ask that you please watch your step and be sure to take small children by hand.
absolute mess, guys. That was amazing. Like, what? That was one of the best Disney shows I've ever seen. I don't understand why it's going away. Why have people been complaining about this show? I... Listen, I don't know how much of this I would have been able to show you because of copyright reasons, but I hope you got to get a glimpse at least of how incredible Harmonious is at Epcot. This show was built for the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World and it's been playing in Epcot since October of 2021. And I wish I'd gotten to see it sooner because that was amazing. Like, it was emotional. It nearly brought me to tears. In fact, I did shed a couple of tears. The songs that they chosen for it was amazing. I loved how they used different languages to sing some of these iconic Disney songs that we all love, like Mulan song, her song, Reflection in Mandarin, Chinese, and then we had, oh my God, a bit of Hunchback of Notre Dame, and not just the English version, but like a mix between the English and the French, which is en bas, instead of um, out there. Oh, it was beautiful, like all the songs, oh, I can't even. Then there was Coco, and there was some like Mexican Spanish stuff going on. We had Dig a Little Deeper with Tiana. I... Why, what, why? Like, why is this going away? That was beautiful. That might be my second favorite nighttime show after Disney Dreams in Disneyland Paris. That was so good. Oh my God, wow. They can keep the barges. I don't mind, keep the barges and keep the show going. There's a little after show going on as well. <laughs> Over there on the lake. Also, look at the moon looking cute. Sorry, I just, I love the moon. But, um, <laughs> I don't know, I'm very overwhelmed, if you can tell. I really did not expect to enjoy this that much. Eddie did tell me that I probably would like it. He really enjoyed it as well when he saw it. Harmonious, leave a comment down below guys if you've seen the show. What are your thoughts? Like, I thought it was a perfect mix of songs. Like I said, I love the fact that they use different languages. The fireworks as well. Lordy, there were fireworks going off from everywhere and I thought it was like a perfect balance of loads of fireworks and then some moments where it was a bit calmer and then the music and the projections did their own job. I love this. Oh, this is just so annoying as well because I was hoping this would be the only time I get to see this in a way because like if I didn't enjoy it enough I would have just been fine with the ones. Like with the other show in Magic Kingdom, uh, what's that one called? Enchantment. I really don't mind if I don't see that again. I saw it last night. It was fine. It was a good show but I don't need to see it again. This one. I need to see it again, like, and I've only got a week left of being able to come here. I think I've got one more Epcot reservation before it goes away. I wasn't planning on staying all night to see this again, but I'm gonna have to, I think, so there you go. <laughs> anyway, it is 9 p.m. The park officially closed at 9 o'clock, and yeah, people are heading out of the park. I wanted to show you the ball again, all lit up right now in the dark it does look cool and i think there is actually some kind of beacon of magic going on in epcot too you know how we saw one yesterday at the magic kingdom like this very short little segment on the iconic things in the relevant park so i, I think we must have missed it today I'll try and catch it next time i'm here not too bothered about it though all my focus is going to have to go to watch harmonious again next time i'm in epcot which i think is in like three or four days time so make sure you are subscribed guys there'll be plenty more vlogs coming 20 minutes later it took a while <laughs> to get to the front of the park. Maybe. You can see the ball there behind me, but Lord have mercy, there were crowds everywhere. Obviously because the park closed at nine o'clock as well in the show, the Harmonious show was also at 9 p.m. Everybody wanted to watch that. And then it's the same as like in Disneyland Paris when they have a nighttime show happening exactly during park closure, like when the park closes, then everybody's gonna be obviously leaving the park at the same time, meaning loads and loads of crowds. But we are finally out here. Look at the ball there behind me. I don't really love Epcot that much, but to be fair, I have to say, it does look pretty cute and I think Harmonious may have made me love Epcot a bit more. It's a shame that, like I said, it's going away. Lord have mercy. This is where we began our day this morning in this park with the beautiful Encanto topiaries that are actually new for this year. Some of the topiaries like the Arno and Elsa one for instance they've had before in previous years for the Flower and Garden Festival but these ones, of course, with Encanto being a new movie, first time they've appeared. What an amazing day we've had at Epcot, honestly. It's currently about 10 p.m. I'm gonna head back to my hotel. I think I'm gonna probably have to get something to eat as well because I am quite hungry. Might just head to um, the Mara. Thank you so much, bye-bye. The Mara at Animal Kingdom Lodge, where I'm staying, and just grab something, take away, take it to my room. I wanna try and get an early night tonight. So I'm really hoping that I can get to Animal Kingdom early tomorrow because that is my favorite park in Walt Disney World. So 
yeah i'll speak to you when we get to my hotel room thank you so much for watching the vlog so far though i appreciate you but we probably have another four or five minutes of it left this is where you'd go by the way if you're getting buses back to your resorts no matter which disney resort you're staying at there's bus stops there they've got different numbers it's the same with every park as well they've got buses that go back to the disney resorts from all four of the main parks as well as the water park so yeah, I'm not actually sure which one is the bus for us, for Animal Kingdom Lodge. A cast member did say it's either six or seven, so I'm gonna have to check, there should be a board somewhere. So there you go, this is the board over here, and you can see it says Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, number six, and you've got all the other resorts over here as well. Six is just over there, thankfully. Not far to go, and hopefully the bus should be coming soon. There you go, the bus has arrived, Animal Kingdom Lodge. There are quite a lot of people in front of me though, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to get in or not. Hopefully I should be able to go in, because the bus is big enough, but we'll see. More than likely I'm going to have to stand though. I doubt there's going to be any seats available, so I'm probably going to just next speak to you when I'm at my hotel room. Well, it's a few hours later. I am, as you can see, back in my beautiful Animal Kingdom Lodge hotel room. I am extremely tired, I'm about to go to sleep, but I want to quickly finish the vlog now. On the way back from Epcot to Animal Kingdom Lodge, on the bus, I decided to just mobile order the food that I wanted from the Mara, which is a quick service restaurant at Animal Kingdom Lodge. I was hoping to get one of the like bowls that I got the other day on my first day, on my travel day. Check out that vlog if you haven't already, but unfortunately, they stopped serving those at 10 p.m. And then they had this late night menu option, which was literally only flatbreads or one cold sandwich, which is a tuna sandwich so i decided to go for the flatbread there was a three different options i went for the cheese option like i said it wasn't my first choice but i was hungry and i just wanted something to eat and that seemed to be the only kind of hot meal option that they had at animal kingdom lodge at that time of night we got back to animal kingdom lodge by i want to say about 10 30 pm so it really wasn't even that late i was hoping for their quick service option to be open a bit later maybe until midnight especially because it's a time when some parks do stay open until 10 11 pm especially magic kingdom so it would have been nice but um i mean at least they had the option for flatbreads and the cheese flatbread it was it was all right like i wouldn't get it again in fact some parts of it actually looked a bit burnt and tasted a bit burnt as well so i wasn't the biggest fan of the taste but it wasn't inedible either like i ate most of it it did the job it did what it had to do which was help my hunger but uh, yeah not great and i wouldn't recommend so that's how the evening went and then i thought i'd also mention about the tip that i had left for the cast members the mouse keeping cast members this morning i think i mentioned earlier in the vlog that i didn't have a pen or a paper to actually write something for the cast members but i wanted to leave them some tip and i left it actually on the sink in the bathroom in hopes that it would kind of be obvious to them that it's for them and thankfully they've taken it so i'm so so glad that it worked out like normally i would write something but like i said i can't seem to find a paper or a notepad in this room i feel like most hotel rooms have something or normally i bring something with me but I, I forgot to bring any paper so i couldn't write anything but at least now i know that if i put it in the bathroom more than likely they should be able to tell that it is for them and yeah i'm glad that it worked out but oh my god i am so tired like i said i want to ideally go to animal kingdom very early tomorrow morning it opens at 8 a.m so we will see if i manage or not but i just looked at the weather and in the morning like before noon it's meant to be about 27 28 degrees and i know that's only like a three or four degree difference but i think it would help a lot because in the afternoon time once it gets past that 30 degree mark it's just too hot for me so i'm gonna try and make the most of it tomorrow thank you so much for watching this vlog i had an amazing day in epcot really enjoyed harmonious cannot wait to hopefully see it again before it gets taken away and yeah we did quite a lot as well went on some rides met joy which was cute i ate some food i actually really want to go back soon and eat some more of the flower and garden food festival because the one thing that i did have from the festival that corn under cub with the garlic sauce and like the crispy uh, spicy chips on top of it which was vegan and plant-based as well that was delicious and i've heard molly from mammoth club who i absolutely love she's amazing she's definitely my number one walt disney world vlogger she's always said that flower and garden has the best food so i trust her opinion because i feel like she likes a lot of things that i do when it comes to disney and with the one thing that i tried anyway i was a fan so i cannot wait to hopefully try some more flower and garden food but with that i am gonna go thank you so much for watching this vlog it's been a long one again make sure you stay tuned for tomorrow put the notification bells on because i don't know when the next vlog will be up i don't have a schedule i just upload whenever i can so subscribe so you don't miss out on my next vlog and so that you get notified whenever i do put something up I will see you in the next video. I need to sleep. Good night. Oh,